very true. The pubs that I walked around and saw something else, even on weekdays, weekends, no matter what it was, it was absolutely overflowing. People way out of the doors. And I, I don't even know how long it would take me if I walked to that big mass of people just having the best time of their life with their their friends and you know neighbors, all that stuff, strangers. I don't know how long it would take me just to like weave my way through to the front. It would take me forever, but it, it was overflowing and it looked like it looked like a blast. Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be watching and reacting to Visit England, 10 Shocks of Visiting England. And I guess England specifically. I'm surprised I haven't done this video yet, reacted to this, because I love, when I went there in 2018, it's, you know, years years now, but um, we did plan, we did plan to go back and then, you know, pandemic and all that. Anyways, off topic. So 10 Shocks of Visiting England. I'll give you my flavor of it when I went there because it was my first time. I've been to Scotland prior and I've been to Ireland, Northern Ireland before as well. But when I was a kid, so this was the first time that I've been to England. Uh, never been to Wales. I'll get to you, Wales. I promise. Uh, and I'll let you know what I truly think of this list for my perspective and view. Let me know what you think too. Is this correct? Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World and today we're in Windy, England here in London. And today what we have for you are the 10 things that might shock a tourist when they do come here to England. One shock right now is that I see blue sky and it looks kind of, yes, windy. Looks warm and beautiful though. I, yeah, that, that, that was, um, I got very lucky I think with the entire week that I was there. Uh, I think it was like overcast once. It was apparently an amazing thing so yeah that that's one shocker for me right now and the first thing that shocks tourists is the, the english they really mind their p's and q's i mean they are very polite you will hear sorry please thank you so many times you'll understand when people say i hope my little boy grows up to be an english gentleman because they do have manners here no not everybody has manners but you will be surprised how much the politeness really comes in, whether you're talking to the police, you're talking to the, the people that work in tourism, or just normal everyday people. The pleases, the sorries, they bump into people. Oh, sorry, sir, sorry, excuse me, sir. And with those P's and Q's, so P's the politeness, and Q is the Q's here, okay? You'll be shocked with how people really stand in line very well here, and nobody Q jumps or line jumps or butts in line, because that is totally not a cool thing to do here in England. So that's the first thing that shocks people, how they mind their P's and their Q's. Okay. I think that's, I mean, that that's true, but uh, I must say, one, it's probably their accent as well. I think it's your accent is very, you know, whenever there's some in, in our movies here, Hollywood, all that stuff, movies and shows, when there's someone that's like smart or genius or, or very, pro you know, they're always very proper and they're always, they're always from, you know, they're always British, it seems like. They're always like the smart, sophisticated, you know, kind of posh accents often. And maybe that's also kind of what we think of. Yes, they're very polite. And I think some of the most polite people I've met are in the British Isles. I really don't think, I, I don't think I can name one country that I've been to that was, I, I could say they weren't, you know, nice. Okay, now the second thing that kind of shocks tourists when they come here is, you might actually like the food. I know, I know, Food's it's good. like I'm being Food's sacrilegious good. here, saying you might like English. It's such a mixing pot, I guess, of, of people around the world. Did not have any complaints about the food. English food, but hear me out. They actually have some pretty good stuff when you are good. here. And it sounds silly, but you'll be surprised how many like the foods you do have here, you might really like when you sit down and have that English breakfast with eggs and beans Very and good. toast and sausages, you know, bangers and stuff like that. It is such a good thing. Or when you go to the pubs and you go have a, a pub grub there, you know, have the Sunday roast or or, oh, or have a good beef burger or, or oh, steak and kidney pie. There is actually a lot of good foods that are here. Fish and chips is an experience you should have. The chocolates, oh, Cadbury, come on. You, you can't compare American chocolate to, no. to British chocolate, English chocolate. It's two different worlds. And that kind of shocks people. They go, you know what? I actually had some food I liked here. I know, it, it sounds crazy. That's why it's the second thing that'll shock you. The third thing that'll shock you about England is how much the weather does actually kind of suck sometimes. No, it's not raining every day. Obviously, I'm here in beautiful, sunny London. I mean, who says that? Beautiful, sunny London? Yes, they do have sun here, and you do get to go it's outside beautiful. when it's not pouring rain. 
but a lot of times it does rain here. I've been here where it's raining like horizontally and getting soaking wet and all kinds of stuff. So when you do come, just be prepared because you know what? You might get a great day like this or you might just get rain for the entire time you're here. So make sure you bring a rain jacket when you come to be prepared for the weather. And if you don't want to bring something, there's people selling umbrellas when, you, when it is a rainstorm, so you'll be okay. But just know, usually the weather kind of sucks sometimes. Not all the time though. Now the fourth thing that shocks tourists when they come here is how much the pub is kind of a focal point of a, of a lot of people's lives here. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go to small towns, the pub is like the center where things go on, where you, you watch the football match and you have your Sunday roast, and you go get a pint and talk. Very true. The pubs that I walked around and saw, we really didn't, I don't think we went to a legit uh, pub when we were there, but we passed, you know, infinite pubs while we walked everywhere there we didn't you know rent rent a car or anything like that uh we walked everywhere throughout the entire day we we're out from early morning and we got back late at night and the pubs were something else even on weekdays weekends no matter what it was it was absolutely overflowing people way out of the doors and i, I don't even know how long it would take me if i walked to that big mass of people just having the best time of their life with their their friends and you know neighbors all that stuff strangers i don't know how long it would take me just to like weave my way through to the front it would take me forever but it, it was overflowing and it looked like it looked like a blast talk about work and life and the family and how much the pub really is a part a quintessential part of an English experience so make sure you do go there and have maybe some of those foods you like or have an ale that the guy literally is cranking out for you and it really is a part of everyday life here in England and that's what's cool it's like you know you think about the US oh I'm going to the bar or I'm going to a bar but here I'm going to the pub and it, it means something more and that shocks tourists when they think oh it's just a bar no pub is so much more than that so you can have your Sunday roast with the family or or a pint with your pals and things like that and the pub crawls and all these things that can go with it it is really cool and it shocks people how important pubs really are to English culture now the fifth thing that'll shock Agreed. you about England which is kind of weird that I'm doing it here in London is England is not just London mm -hmm. I know so many people that come to London and then they say, oh, I've seen England, or they say, I've seen Europe. Look, England and Europe, in that matter, is way more than London. London is an international city with all kinds of amazing things to do and see, but the country itself has tons of other things out there. The natural beauty and the things to see and the history is fantastic. So you'll be shocked that there's more to England than London. So get out there. And that's why it leads into the sixth thing that's going to that's very true as well. When, when I was there, I was purely in, you know, pretty much London. Then we went to Southampton to uh, take, take a cruise ship out of, of there, but really didn't stop anywhere. We're just kind of blew through everything. The videos that I've watched and just talking about like some of the top cities and other, other reactions of the top, you know, towns and things to do really show like spread light on what it's really is. I feel like London's... <laughs> I don't want to say not not like you know England, but it's it's kind of like when you think of uh, if you were to say New York is is America. If you go to New York, you've seen America. Same same type of thing. You really really have not seen America if you've seen New York, and you really have not seen, in my opinion, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll get bashed for this, but you really haven't seen you know England if you've been to London. You haven't seen like. Uh, the heart of it and like the the soul i guess of it but you've seen you know one 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 portion of it but uh there's there's so much more so much more shock you when you come to england and you get outside of the out, out of the countryside this country is actually beautiful go through kent and the gardens of kent or or, mm -hmm. or go to the peak district or the lake district go up to yorkshire and see york i mean this country is gorgeous and you want to go out there and go explore it and that's what's really cool is look it's not just london and when you get outside of London, the countryside and those towns, beautiful. the villages really are beautiful things to see. So exploring that countryside leads us into the seventh thing that's going to shock you when you do come to England. And that is when you rent a car and your first roundabout. I'm not going to lie to you. The first time I took a roundabout, I'm like, oh my God, I'm on. First off, they drive on the left side of the road. Okay. So make yeah. sure when you cross the street, you look right. Otherwise you're going to get smashed. Okay. But the thing is when you get that first roundabout, there's like two lanes and two lanes. You're like, okay, I've got to go right. So I got to go around the roundabout and then come off this way. And you're like, oh my God. And once you do that first roundabout and you're like, okay, what do I turn in? What do I turn about? All these things, it will shock you into a heart attack. Okay. And then 
after you do that, you'll realize when you watch European Vacation, National Lampoon's European Vacation, and you see Chevy Chase going around the Griswolds, going around the circle. Look, kids, Big Ben, Parliament. Look, kids, Ben, Big Parliament. For like six hours, you start to understand because seriously, renting a car and driving on the other side of the road is shocking in and of itself. But when you get that first roundabout, you're like, oh God, I'm gonna die. And he's not he's not really exaggerating here. And we, we really don't have, we do have roundabouts, but they're really not like the roundabouts you have there. We have these very tiny ones and shopping malls and, and stuff like that. You just like kind of yield, you wait, and it's like a little one lane thing. You, you really don't see more than one lane here. And they're even rare. Like I could drive hours upon hours and never touch a roundabout here in the US. And I think we're, we're a little generous here in, in some places with roundabouts, but he's not exaggerating. I was lucky where, when I was younger, I saw my, you know, my parents would, would drive there. So I'm used kind of more understanding of the left side and roundabouts in general and kind of how to work them. But I was in fifth grade at the time and I was a tiny little kid, so I didn't, didn't really know what was happening. Okay. Now the eighth thing that's gonna shock you is when you do travel around, you actually can see Down Abbey type houses, the stately homes, the stately manor houses and the country homes and stuff like that. You can go visit those and it's cool because a lot of people, oh, it's just a, it's a set piece or it's CGI or something like that. No, these are real homes that you can go to. You know, you can go to the Cotswold and see the houses there. You can go around and see these stately homes, take tours of them, go to the gardens, have lunch there, have a picnic there. There, see all these things and it's cool because you get shocking like wow you can't see that old Downton Abbey kind of things here that old England it's not just in the textbooks anymore it is out there in the country yeah. and that's one of the best things the National Trust they have all kinds of homes you can go stay at I mean you can stay at them literally well, I guess one thing I'd say with that Downton Abbey kind of thing is you can have some of those true Englishisms here staying at an old house an old you know stately manor or you know or what you do with the National Trust they have all these homes you can stay in a home that's a thousand years old and enjoy that there and that's what's so cool is you can get the history of England in these homes and to get that kind of Downton Abbey feel I know that this show's been off the air for a while now but it does have one of those things that shocks tourists is that wow I really get to enjoy those kind of things now I will say you get to see the Downton Abbey homes and stuff like that the Downton Abbey acting and stuff like that yes people still have good manners here but it's not like Downton Abbey anymore I'll tell you what just go to a go to the pub on Friday night or Saturday during the the soccer a uh, football match you'll understand what I mean now I think that's a good tip too my, my family generally will not we'll stay in bed and breakfast uh, and now kind of Airbnbs, but a lot of bread and bed, be bread, bed and breakfast around, you know, whenever we had, tra when we whenever we travel abroad, we, we will always, and even, even around here nowadays, uh, don't, don't stay in, you know, in my opinion, like a Marriott or a Hilton or something, unless you're near the airport and you're going to leave, leave the next day or something and you want convenience, but otherwise, you know, try to, live among wherever you go the people and the, the culture and really experience it further and yeah you know that that's my little suggestion it's it's much more fulfilling to uh do that rather than just go into a hotel and go into your tiny little room experience these these homes and these history the the history that they have there uh where we really don't have it here that's that that's really unique to us what, what he's saying and how old these historical buildings are. Now, the ninth thing that's gonna shock you when you come here to England is the cops don't have guns. You know, in the US, they've always got a gun on the side no matter what. Here, most of the cops, the bobbies, they don't carry guns, okay? And the thing is, the cops here are super friendly as well. So it's kind of like they're there for security, but it's almost like they're also there for tourist help. I mean, it's pretty funny because I know there's been many times when I'm like, okay, where, which way do I need to go to Notting Hill or, or I'm in York, hey, where, how do I get to the, to, to, to the church and stuff like that or where's the best place to go have tea and crumpets and the, and the police officers male or female they're like oh go down there three blocks to the left you're gonna see this thing and they're super great but it does shock people when they see the cops but they don't have any guns now there are some cops with guns yes but it is kind of a shocking thing if you're coming from the US or South America and stuff like that to be like hey it's a cop and he's got a walkie-talkie huh interesting <laughs> yeah. but it is cool and they are super friendly which is super nice and the 10th thing that shocks that that's you know another another true thing here you know you, you'll never see a, a police officer with without a gun you know they all it seems like they all have guns and even 
later, I think it was my senior year in high school, I guess secondary school, if I remember that correctly, an officer would come and kind of just stop by every once in a while uh, just to kind of stroll around the school, you know, just security and chat with people, um, just just kind of have them around sometimes. And yes, they would, of course, have a have a have a pistol on them. It would be strange to see one not with a pistol. And even even some like security and stuff will have will have guns. There's a lot of guns. You know, it's not a rare thing to if you're out in the town, you'll see, you know, some guard or police officer or, you know, people moving money around and they just have have guns on them. And sometimes, you know, especially the people that move money around will have vests on and stuff. It's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty different there. And I heard one thing, I don't know if it's true, but it's like police here aren't overly friendly. Like, yes, of course you go ask someone, a, a police officer, a question like, Hey, how do I get here? Whereas in the UK and I'm assuming, you know, most of Europe and uh, probably a lot of places other than the U S they have, you know, like the highlighter yellow vests on. And I don't know if that's true, but I asked once why that is, you know, cause I'm stunned here living in the U.S. Like, won't they be seen from miles away so the people will slow down? But they're to, like, if someone needs help, they can spot them easier. That's what I heard. I mean, that's probably one of the many reasons. But I'm like, wow, I never thought of that. You never think think of that here in the U.S. And then I really thought of them. Like, that makes so much sense. that They're here to, you know, protect and serve. Why are ours so, you know, it, it's just strange. It's, it's funky to me. Talks to us when they're here is when they realize that Britain and England are not the same thing. England is a part yeah. of Britain, okay? It's called the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So obviously Northern Ireland's separate, Great Britain, that's England and Scotland and Wales. And that's the thing is, if you meet a Scotsman or a Welshman and you say, oh, you're English, they're gonna be insulted. Cause no, England is a different country, but they'll be okay if you say they're British because there are a lot of differences between going to England and going to Wales and going to Scotland, whether it's the accent or even a different language they may speak there, the food and things like that. I mean, the pub culture pretty much stays in all those places, but there really is a difference. And just remember, you'll be shocked that England is not Britain, okay? It's two different ideas. Anyway, those are just 10 things that might shock you for coming to England on tourism or travel or vacation or fun. What are some of the things that shocked you about coming to England? Please put it in the comment section below so we can have more shocks. And if you want to see more videos like this, 10 things that'll shock you about London, five things you love and hate about visiting England, all kinds of stuff like that. Check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, all right, Instagram. All right, all right. They're, they're, they're everywhere. That's, that's for sure. But yeah, this guy seems like he's been everywhere. But let me know if these are, you know, how you feel about the this list and kind of if you have anything to add on or even what I said or even questions for that that's it right there so you can see them hey I need help boom you you see you know highlighter yellow there's there's a police officer and they could help me you know right so I don't know I should look more into that but let me know what you think about this video in general the last one with the whole England is not Britain and all that stuff Americans will just always mess that up let me know what you think about this and the list and uh yeah let me know because this was I, li I like these kind of lists and and learning more and giving my flavor on it so thanks for watching and until next time we'll do more of these and yeah have a good rest of your day see you next time